How's it going, everybody? My name is Mike from Box and Jackalope, and welcome to a new Kunlai Campfire episode. This one is a bit overdue and a bit um, of a reboot of our podcast. We've been gone about a month now. Um, the last episode we did was BlizzCon speculation, and I don't want to say it's been in development in hell, but we've just kind of all been a little bit busy lately we wanted to just reboot a few things um i'm actually joined by skull shorties today and we're gonna talk about world of warcraft shadowlands and just share our thoughts with it now that the dust is kind of settled um i've made a few videos on it so far one related to bolvar and like dead characters i'd like to see but uh yeah welcome skull greetings and salutations yep that's me skull shorties i am back again the real the burrito box. shorties is back on stream today. I, I've 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 been harping on Box to be changing the format of how these streams are done in a very similar format to other podcasters. So I'm glad that he finally has heeded my advice. <laughs> I've storm, earth, and fire. Heed my call. Come to my aid. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Uh, um so shadowlands <laughs> so shadowlands the next expansion i mean there were so many leaks of it it's not too surprising that's what we got mm -hmm. uh god i don't even remember my prediction from so long ago it's i wish we did this sooner <laughs> because then i'd be able to like oh what did i say in that video um i think i actually remember I, I, your prediction I think the closest thing I got is they're focusing more on the cosmology stuff. Mm -hmm. Like I, I said that they're going to focus more on the war between the void and the light or whatever. And uh, I think that my biggest hope was that Dragon Isles would be a pivotal part of it and the Scourge would be a pivotal part. Uh, I was kind of right in some areas, but it's mostly they're not doing another Wrath of the Lich King because... Lich King's gone. Right. Helm got broke by Sylvanas Windrunner, as we see in the cinematic, which I think we should talk about the cinematic. <laughs> yeah. I that... Oh, I, I think that would be a good starting point this week. Yeah. Um, so, you want to go first? or? Yeah, I'll, I'll do just a general recap for anyone. So, I feel like if you're watching this, you've kind of seen the cinematic and have a general idea of what's going on. But basically, after the events of Reckoning, and I'm assuming at some point after or during 8.3, Sylvanas decides to take a little trip to Ice Crown Citadel and confronts the Lich King, beats him in a 1v1, which at first I was kind of confused by it, but after Blizzard added some context, it made sense. Um, essentially, Sylvanas has been um, obtaining power through the Jailer. Um, we find this out when Ian explained it at blizzcon this year but um yeah it was really really cool one seeing bolvar on screen um i wasn't as thrilled at seeing sylvanas kick his ass but visually man the character is so cool i love his hammer um his design the cinematic itself is absolutely gorgeous and the at the end of the cinematic sylvanas gets the helm of domination rips it in half and bam we're going to shadowlands everybody um but overall, the cinematic, from what I saw from fan reception, was kind of split down the middle. Some people really liked it, some people really hated it. And I think it kind of revealed something that I don't know if I want to talk about on this podcast about Sylvanas, but I noticed a lot of negativity towards the character on a lot of forum posts and videos after this cinematic. Like, people are getting kind of burnt out of her. Um, I know we can get to that later on, but for me, personally... I thought the cinematic was great. I actually kind of like the story beat. I think it gives us a lot of interesting development for Bolvar 4 Dragon. Um, having him as a prominent character is going to be fantastic. It's something that I've been waiting for for quite a while. I liked the breadcrumbs we got of him during Legion. So it's going to be awesome. I'm assuming going forward and we can get to this, it's going to be about him reforging the helm of domination hopefully we get some interaction with talia we'll get to that later on but overall the cinematic gets a pretty good grade from me so skull what did you think um like always blizzard does fantastic cinematics you did a pretty good recap of everything um if you want I, I know that my reaction video did not do so well view wise which 
that sometimes that happens sometimes it depends on the thumbnail but uh mm -hmm. i think it had a lot to do with my own reaction of i was very on the side of bovar winning because basically bovar he's just trying to do his job of being jailer of the damned at that point now 8.3 isn't out yet. The Allied Race Death Knight scenario, if there is one, mm -hmm. isn't out yet. But I assume it's going to be Bovar waking up, essentially, and, you know, crowning or, you know, collecting his, his Death Knights into his fold, you know. But uh, at that point that Sylvanas attacks Bovar, Bovar really hasn't done too much wrong, aside from maybe the Legion Order Hall campaign. Where, you know, you kill a bunch of red dragons, uh, you raise a bunch of dead alliance and horde heroes, um, stuff like that. And he, he's ultimately doing it, though, for the greater good of Azeroth yeah. in a way, which is really interesting. Because I really like that he's, I know we use this word a lot, but that he's a consequentialist character in that regard. He's, but ultimately I was cheering for Bolvar because I knew what his motives mostly were with sylvanas it's this guessing game of what are you doing girl? what mm -hmm. are you what is your goal here and right now we really don't know what her goal is and that gets a bit annoying because they've been tailing us along with this since legion honestly of what is sylvanas going to do what is sylvanas up to and uh, right. we actually learned that she's been with the jailer in cahoots with him since Edge of Night, which was her suicide uh, at the end of Wrath and the beginning of Cataclysm. Uh, and that, that's when she got all her Valkyrs gathered up and mm -hmm. uh, made the bargain with them to basically set them free from the Lich King, the new Lich King, Bolvar. Um, and honestly, it does feel like this was built up for the longest time that Sylvanas was going to fight Bolvar and take his crown. We just didn't know that if she would take the crown and break it or take it and wear it. Um, would I have preferred if she wore the crown instead? I don't know. I I think that would have been a little bit more interesting, but at the same time, I think everybody expected it. So her breaking it was such a shocking thing. But right. uh, getting into the meat and potatoes of Sylvanas basically destroying Bolvar. Uh, of course, at the time, most people were like, what the hell? How can she do this? What's going on? And I had to basically t double take in my video. Like, I made the reaction video, and I was going to post it, and I actually was like, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and talk about the new information we learned, uh, which they provided the dev team with, like, the Jailer giving Sylvanas all this power up from the Souls she's been gathering and it's been confirmed that she's been gathering the souls for the jailer and the ma since legion which mm -hmm. makes sense because it's the same around time that Bol that Vol'jin got tricked into making Sylvanas war chief which will also i guess get to that i mean we've known that for a while now that the whole thing with you know Vol'jin was tricked but now we know that Sylvanas potentially and might have known that was going to happen which, which makes is... it sting all the worse it makes it worse. It definitely does. Um, that really I'm upset me. The I'm idea. Definitely, I'm definitely in the crowd of people that's sick and tired of Sylvanas. Uh, I think it would have been better, and this is my own personal take, if Sylvanas took some damage from the Lich King. Not like... I know that like I've argued with so many people on Twitter about this, but like... Uh, a lot of people argue that if she did take damage, she would have been killed by the Lich King. She's undead. Yeah, she, and she's super strong, too. I mean, like, anime, like it's the same way, like, anime fights. Uh, most World of Warcraft fights, you know, you take a hit from, like, an Iron Star, and you can survive from it. Like, stuff right. like that. And I know that the cinematics provide a little bit more realism, but it's a fantasy. It's a game. It's, you know, World of Warcraft. I think... You know, they could have gotten away with, like, Bovar doing some sort of blast of some kind. Mm -hmm. And uh, knocking a shoulder pad off of Sylvanas and it falls down below. Um, like, what I personally would have done with this cinematic is change Sylvanas' appearance forever. Kind of like how Sarfang scarred her eye. Um, people will look at her differently. It's a good, it's a good metaphor, you know? Um, and it would have showed more of a struggle, more of a... A battle between the two because it just looked like Sylvanas was dancing around Bolvar's attacks 
and smiling and doing, you know, what she's been doing for, like, most of the expansion of BFA. Right. Um, even in Legion, she took a hit from Gen Greymane and also got her lantern shattered. Uh, with with Sarfang, she took the eye scratch with his with his axe. Not his axe, uh, Chalamet. Blah. Remembering things weird. Um, <laughs> but she took hits. In against all beings, the most celebrated villain, the Lich King. And I get it. He's not Arthas the Lich King. He's Bolvar the Lich King. He's a much weaker Lich King. Um, I just think that it would have been nice to kind of have a battle damage Sylvanas by the end of it. You know, kind of have her lose her hood mm -hmm. and her show her hair more. Uh, lose a shoulder pad. Um, like change her appearance up a little bit. I think a little. I think the biggest worry is Blizzard's afraid of changing her look too much to the point where she's unrecognizable. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I think there's some things that we can still like recognize Sylvanas for. Um, but I, that's that's my whole take on it. I'm just really tired of Sylvanas basically just destroying everyone and everything, and just. It just seems way too easy for her. I get it. She planned for that moment. I get that she got power from the jailer. It's just really hard to root for her because I felt like that was the point of the cinematic was kind of making her you root for her. Kind of like have Grom Hellscream where he was fighting the Burning Legion. He was fighting this pit lord, Menoroth. You were rooting for Garrosh and Grom in the cinematic personally. Right. But with Sylvanas... The, the opponent she was facing felt like I was cheering for Bolvar. And, and, and you have to bear in mind, too, that the cinematic is released right after they released the Reckoning cinematic, after she calls yeah. us all nothing. She called us all nothing. She killed Sarfing with one blast. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, he, she, she played with him. You know, like, we knew from the start that she was going to win against Sarfang, and Sarfang knew that. Right. Uh, quite honestly, the fact that Sarfang landed a hit on her is pointed out by everybody that, you know, Sarfang managed to land a hit on Sylvanas, but the friggin' Lich King didn't. <laughs> um, some people point out the fact that she was hit by a pillar of ice from the Frozen Throne. I mean, it doesn't look like she took a hit. It looks like she kind of just evaporated into, you know, her smoke ability, which is OP as shit, I know. by the way. Um... But my overall thoughts, it's a good cinematic to set up for Shadowlands. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just, I just wish that Sylvanas took more hits. But otherwise, I'm fine with the narrative of him losing. I think that we kind of all knew he was going to lose, and that's okay. But I would have loved to struggle. I would have loved a better fight. Right. Uh, and the, fight, the fight was good, actually. I, it's bad wording, but I just think that Sylvanas should have took more of a hit. Mm -hmm. It's a good cinematic. It's not one of my favorites. I'm definitely on the side of people uh, who are tired of Sylvanas, you know, just destroying everything. I think that there there needs to be this struggle to power because when you look at a lot of villain craft, there's still a struggle to get to the top, and it feels like that struggle that Sylvanas originally had is all but gone, and I think that's kind of disappointing. But that's all I have to really say about cinematic. I know that was pretty long. But. There's only... So I only have one more thing to say about that. Um, just to follow up on what you said, I'm indifferent. I'm I'm burnt out on Sylvanas, but I'm not at the same time. Like, I'm kind of curious where they're going to go with her. And there's one other thing I wanted to point out that I loved about this cinematic. That, one, I felt like it actually allowed you to get more of a read on Bolvar with the way... Like, just as by looking at his movement. I know that sounds really weird. But you can tell he's, like, kind of, like, has this, like, go away, I'm trying to protect everybody vibe to him. The way he moves and looks around and stuff at the beginning of it. Super badass character, though. I can't wait to see what he does in the in Shadowlands. I'm definitely excited with Bolvar, and I think that there is some small misinterpretation. I'm not done with Sylvanas. I'm not done with my intrigue on Sylvanas. I just could have used a break. Mm -hmm. Is all I'm saying. It's like, I I feel I feel like we've been dealing with her for so long. Just the third cinematic I, she's in, no character has ever had this many cinematic. I, I think too, a lot of people want to know where they're going with her at this point because it's been a yeah. huge mystery for like two expansions now. Um, there's a there's a big on and off of, you know, what's she gonna do? You know. So 
The next thing I'd like to talk about are the, and we'll get to the factions in each of these realms, but um, I'm just going to read off for the, I'm on the website right now, by the way. So I'm going to read mm. off the different realms in the Shadowlands, and we'll talk about them a little bit, each of them. But um, first of all, visually, these zones all look beautiful from the previews. I'm very excited for the art style of this expansion. But the four new zones we have for five, technically, um, that we get to go quest in are, um, the first one is Bastion, and you can do these in any order. In Bastion, those, and I'm reading this right off the website again, those who have lived a life of service are drawn to Bastion to assume the highest duty of all, carrying souls to the Shadowlands. Amongst Bastion's gleaming spires and sweeping vistas await challenges to test the metal of the steadfast Kyrians, which are like these blue people. The next zone we have is Ardenweald, which is actually my favorite of the bunch. A vibrant afterlife for those closely connected to the wild. Ardenweald is a domain of endless restoration tended by mystic night fay. Within this eternal forest, massive dream trees draw in precious anima, soul essence, to feed the spirits of nature awaiting rebirth. And then we have Maldraxxus, which looks like a great zone to potentially play a Death Knight or Warlock or something. But within the war-torn Maldraxxus, might of all kinds makes right. Here in the birthplace of necromatic magic, those who master the powers of death turn legions of ambitious souls into relentless undead armies. And a very interesting one is Revendreth, which is in the uh, fourth zone, a realm of looming keeps and gothic villages, Revendreth is home to the Venthyr, which is a vampire-looking race. The harvesters of sin, the wretched souls who arrive here, may find penance for their misdeeds, or merely indulge in the appetites of their keepers. They actually mentioned Kael'thas will be going to this zone. And lastly, we have the Maw. To be cast into the Maw is to be doomed to a bleak eternity. It is Tomul... I don't know how to say that word. Tomulatus and... Where the vilest souls in the cosmos are imprisoned forever. Should the ancient evil chained here break free, all of reality will be consumed. Um, so, these zones all sound really fun, to be honest. Like, I'm kind of curious which one I'm going to like and which I'm going to dislike. But, it they all sound really good. I um, think visually they look fun. And there's different factions that reside within these zones and I'm gonna go ahead and explain those now skull if that's okay um, while we're at it and then we'll get to each of them so there's a new feature in Shadowlands called Covenants and you essentially get to swear allegiance to one of them um, at end game so like while you're leveling you can play around with the different abilities and decide which one you like best um, so if you're from Bastion you're Kyrian if you're from Revendreth, you're a Venthyr, Ardenweald, a Night Fae, and you're a Necro Lord from Maldraxxus. So the beauty of this, and the thing I really like about this, is this adds at least four playthroughs of Shadowlands where you'll be doing something different. Um, something that, well, I, I actually really love Battle for Azeroth, but the replay value isn't quite there that I, where I'd like it. Um, like, the allied races are fun, but this is totally awesome. New abilities, new mounts, new transmog for each, like, faction. So that's gonna be a lot of fun. But, that's a lot of stuff I just covered. Um, Skull, spew your thoughts. Okay. Uh, for warning, the Moxie has entered the facility and it will <laughs> probably interrupt me at some point in time during these. Moxie so may as well be a member of the podcast. He might as well be. <laughs> but, uh, so... Um... The zones aren't bad. I'm intrigued, but at the same time, I'm... I think it definitely is that fatigue of I was really hoping for the Dragon Isles. Is one of right. the things you should never do is... Uh, this is what I did this time again. I don't know why I did it. Uh, of hoping for a specific zone and not getting... I think it's the same way that people are really hoping for necromancers or tinkers, and that didn't happen mm -hmm. during this. But uh, the zones look nice. Um, I think one of the biggest draws to the zones rather isn't the zones themselves, but what's in the zones. Mm -hmm. So, like, for Ravendreth, like you said, Kael'thas is coming back. Uh, Prince Kael'thas, for many of you... Uh, who 
aren't either recent to World of Warcraft or haven't heard from him in a while was uh, a prince who did everything he could for his people. A very similar story of Arthas. Uh, and gave a lot to save them from the addiction of magic. Uh, they lost their Sunwell, which was basically their fount of magic, what they harnessed their power from. It's very similar to the Well of Eternity, um, but they made a new Well of Eternity through the Sunwell, and it got destroyed when Arthas came to resurrect the Lich Kel'Thuzad, who probably we'll see in Maldraxxus too, by the way. Mm -hmm. But um, Kel'Thas, for many, was portrayed very poorly, honestly, in Burning Crusade, and I'd have to agree. Um, Burning Crusade was honestly probably not the best narratively, I know right. a lot of people loved it in Raid. I know a lot of people love some of the zones. But the story was very uh, not good, in my opinion. And Kalthos was one of the persons that got hit the most. Uh, Illidan too, but they later redeemed that with Legion and the book Illidan Stormrage. Mm -hmm. But Kalthos, you know, he basically became somebody who uh, got power hungry and uh, he started hating uh, Illidan for coveting knowledge. And he basically backstabbed Illidan and joined forces with Kil'jaeden. You know, the very demon who created the Lich King. The very demon who pushed uh, the Scourge into Azeroth, basically. Um, and Kael'thas sided with him. And a lot of people were bummed out about that. People wanted... People were excited about Kael'thas potentially leading the Blood Elves into the Horde. People were excited about this character from, honestly, Warcraft 3 that they fell in love with. Warcraft 3 Kael'thas is a lot of people's favorites. Even I liked him, and I don't like Elves. <laughs> so, uh, Ravendreth basically is a realm of redemption for even the most malice or terrible of souls. Right. Uh, and Kalthos is getting that chance, and I believe they said his arc is hunting down who brought him here, and that could either mean kill Jaden or Garethos. And that's pretty interesting to me. I mean, we might see Garethos again, but uh, one of the things that excites me about this is we get to see a potentially new model of Kalthos, because his... His 2007 model is not that good looking. It's, my, it's... my biggest fear is that he's going to be like one of those vampire people that are there. They might make him look a little pale, I think. But hopefully, I think they hopefully they'll make him look distinguished and uh, you know unique enough. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you got Bastion, and Bastion's honestly the zone that concerns me the most because there's gameplay of it, and people have talked about this on the forums. So, in Bastion, to become a Kirin, or to become Ascended, I should say, um, you go through this trial of basically letting go of your past, letting go of your old body, letting go of your name, and uh, it's encouraged in a positive manner. Even the player assists a Torin, I believe, in the, in the playthrough, um, that you uh, that you encourage this Torin to let go of their past and become a Kirin. And that's what... You become a blue person. That's what the Kirins are. You become a blue person. It's, uh... Very concerning. That that's... It's viewed as a positive thing. And the negative faction... I think they're just called Dark Kirins. I don't know the actual name themselves. But they oppose this idea of letting go of your memories. Of letting go of your past. And embrace it. That you should not let go of your past. And... It's honestly very curious to the fact that uh, these characters and these people are so against it and so against the Ascendants. And I'm more on their side than anything, and they're the negative faction. So it's very weird. It's very concerning. It's very uh, odd. But uh, we'll be meeting Uther the Lightbringer there. And hopefully that means that we will be meeting Uther and not blue Kyrian Uther, who's about to become some blue nobody that no one will like. <laughs> You know, I think that's the biggest concern about Bastion is basically the characters that we love so much, like Tyrion Forging, uh, Tyrion, I just said Tyrion, Uther, like I said, uh, I don't know who else would be there, but there's just so many characters that could go to Bastion and we basically make them a blank slate, a boring blank slate, and that's my biggest concern about Bastion, um, 
Let me think about the other zones. Ardenweald. Uh, not much is talked about Ardenweald, as far as I know. It's basically the place of rebirth. And uh, it's the place where Cenarius went to after he died by Grom Hellscream. And I believe it was confirmed that Cenarius is a character we'll be traveling with, as well as Taronda. And I think Taronda's role is to discover what the heck was going on with Elune and why she didn't help out when she did, despite her asking for it. So that'll be interesting. Again, Ardenweald is probably like the less knowledgeable zone I know of, but I, it does look beautiful. I love the trees there. There's a, like a very beautiful art of a tree that looks great. Right? It looks, it looks out of this world, basically. I, I love when they have designs like that that look bizarre and really weird. And I don't know. But uh, Maldraxxus is probably the zone I'm the most curious and interested in because of who they said was in there out of all characters. Mm -hmm. um, it looks like a very bleak and ugly zone, but it's actually the place where the Shadowlands is most defended. It's where the forces that the Lich King and Kel'Thuzad uh, called from. They basically reached into this realm and was like, hey, we need help. Uh, and they answered, and that's why we have all these abominations and undead. They, they're from Maldraxxus. And one of the people they say who helps defend Maldraxxus or is there is Draka. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's basically the realm where either liches go to, liches and necromancers go to, or where... Basically, this is a very orcish death of being defiant as you die. Never, you know... That is a very orcish death. <laughs> it's a very orcish death, so I imagine we'll see a lot of orcs there. I would hope we'd see a lot of orcs. So, Draka, Ogrim, um, who else? Uh, Duratan, maybe. You know, like, like Dranosh, Dranosh Sarfang, Broxigar. Broxigar is going to be there, I think. That's the perfect place to bring Broxigar back. Uh, who is the one guy who wounded Sargeras. Um, what other zones are there? Bastion, Ardenweald, uh, Ravendreth, the Ma. There the we Ma. go, the Ma. So the Ma is the one place where uh, everybody's been going to since Legion. Uh, and they're also it's also the place of the worst of the worst, so probably like Gul'dan uh, and maybe Blackmore is there. <laughs> I can't really think of anyone that's too bad because apparently Kel'thas would go to uh, Ravendreth. So I kind of feel like that opens the possibility of Garrosh being in Ravendreth. I'm hoping, know, Garrosh, actually. I'm really hoping. Garrosh really didn't come off to me as someone who was irredeemable. He was troubled, yes. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, he just really wanted what was best for the orcs. Now... You know, he does kind of go against his own people by joining, you know, making the Iron Horde. So maybe he's irredeemable, but but uh, the Ma is basically the place where the Jailer is. And the Jailer is the guy that Sylvanas Windrunner teamed up with and has been giving him giving her power. Uh, it's also the place where Arthas Menethel was and where Sylvanas went to when she died for a second time when she suicided off of the Ice Crown Citadel. Mm -hmm. Um... It's the place where also I believe they stated that the Forge of... Uh, not the Forge. the uh, It's basically the, the place where the Lich King's helm was made, the Helm of Domination, and also Frostmourne, because they've changed the story from it being crafted by the Dreadlords and Kil'jaeden instead of being crafted by somebody in the Shadowlands. Wait, it, it was forged in the Maw? I believe so. I believe they said it was forged there. Oh, that's actually really interesting. I didn't know that. It makes sense because when you look at the uh, forces in Torgas, mm -hmm. which is like the, you know, the big tower in uh, the Shadowlands well, that we see in the Cinematic, I believe, uh, you can actually see like you know characters who look very similar to Lich King's design the, there. Th this now, uh, I made a video about Bolvar today, but this like now changes what I was talking about. I made a mention that like it would be really interesting to have Bolvar and the Ebon Blade be working to reforge the helm of domination but now it's become clear to me that i, I think it's going to be them sieging the jailer and Torghast, like well, the whole expansion we're going to be meeting the uh forge master who created the helm and created the weapon that were stolen by the dreadlords and potentially kill Jaden, and they'll help us make our legendaries so i think it's very pop I, I think that I don't remember if this was confirmed or not, but I believe Sylvanas has the other half of the helm, and Bolvar has the remaining half that we oh. see fall next to him. 
I think she has it. I don't remember if that was confirmed or not, but I remember somebody telling me that the uh, one helm, one side of the helm, Sylvana still has. That That's so a probably really the, badass visual of, like, a reforged Helm of Domination. I think they're going to reforge it. I feel like the Lich King is so integral to the World of Warcraft. And it was basically after Sylvanas broke it, not only was... Not only was Shadowlands, you know, ripped open to the skies, and, you know, the, the very skies of Ice Crown were shattered like glass or broken ice, um, the Scourge that was held back by Bovar, like, like uh, what's his name? Uh, he's the father of Arthas. Oh, Tyrannus Menethil. Tyrannus Menethil, there we go. Tyrannus Menethil, Tyrannus, bleh. Tyrannus Menethil II warned uh, Tyrion about that somebody needed to be the Jailer of the Damned, or the Scourge would run rampant like locusts. I believe that's what Uther actually said, too. Um, we were warned twice that there must always be a Lich King, and that's going to bleed into Shadowlands. We're going to probably face the Scourge threat once again, and they even said that that's, that's the pre-event. So it's going to be very Lich King-esque, of the Scourge invading us and going ham on us. Mm -hmm. I don't know how well we're going to hold them back, but I imagine it's not going to do so well because I feel like it's only temporary. Uh, I feel like it's basically going to be the Scourge are going to be so powerful and you know difficult to deal with that we're going to have to go to the Shadowlands to go repair the helm. I... And we basically have to assemble a team. I made a video about who we might go, who might go with us. But uh, I think that's what it's going to be about. I think that we're going to have several reunions uh, in the Shadowlands. Uh, Kel'thas meeting a Blood Elf or a High Elf. Thrall getting to meet Draka or various characters who died. You know, Thrall has so many friends who are dead now. It's Vol sad. Vol'jin, um, like, yeah, Karen. Vol'jin, Karen, Ogrim, Varrock, Drenash. The list goes on. His parents. Mm-hmm. Uh, Potentially, you know, Drexthar might kick the bucket too. Oh I don't gosh. Know. He has so few friends left. I made a video about this too. Like, Rexar is like one of the only oldest friends left with him. But I, I think I think Shadowlands has some has a potential of being really good if they focus on the interactions of both the dead and the living. If it's just the dead, I feel like that's a really missed opportunity. I think so too. There, I, I I think we're gonna have characters like Talia Four Dragon, be like prom prominently involved in the storyline. There's no way. Yeah, the Death Knights are probably gonna take a big role. So maybe like the big, you know, the big the big bad uh, Death Knights that we recruited in Legion, the Four Horsemen. I made I brought that up. Um, who else could we see? Uh, I actually was gonna bring this up when we were talking about Ardenwild. Maybe we'll see a Ysera. Because Ooh. she was picked up by a loon and brought Ooh. into a constellation. Mm -hmm. Maybe Ysera is in Ardenwild and she'll get to reunite with Taronda. I think that would be great. I mean, we love Ysera. We that would be so good. Died. I would love it if Ysera came back. I mean, yes, yeah, she's a ghost. That's the biggest That's the biggest worry I have with Shadowlands. Is it going to mean the dead characters who died? That's my biggest fear. That's my biggest concern. It has a very warlords of draenor feeling to it that you know death no longer is a factor because we're visiting the dead realm mm -hmm. the, the realm of the dead i don't know i really i'm really concerned about that of just them being like oh well now you can just go visit the person that just died it's all okay you know it, i feel like death should still matter and i'm just that's my biggest concern i i have a feeling it's going to be like permanently sealed up at the end of the expansion so it won't just be like hey let's go visit the shadow lit you know what i mean yeah it'll be a similar i think it'll be like an argus situation like canonically it'll be sealed up but mm -hmm. gameplay wise you can obviously revisit it because you know like it's the same thing with worlds of draenor technically they sealed that place up and it's still sealed up but obviously for gameplay reasons you can revisit it right they don't want you not to be able to play that content anymore you know so it's one of those situations where lore wise it's probably going to get sealed up once we repiece the helm back together my main hope is basically we piece it back together we jump back to azeroth sylvanas is running at us to go back to the realm and we close it on her that would be brilliant i would love that as the ending 
because I don't really think she deserves a happy ending at this point. I don't know why so many think she does, but <laughs> she's worked so hard against us to get her immortality, to get to escape hell, but each time she does that, she's just making us wanting to push her towards it rather than, you know, pull her away from it. I really think the only characters who realistically pity her now is Nathanos. And that's because he um, loves her. I'm very, very her. curious where they're going to go with her, to tell you the truth. It's going to... Dude, that's going to be a really interesting plot, even though I'm, like, kind of done feel with like her. Th I feel like they're either going to make her the new jailer and in charge of all the people who are, you know, supposed to be there. So she still gets a bad ending where she's forced to do a job she probably will dread. Mm -hmm. But at least she's not the one that's in charge of being tortured. Like, at least she's not being tortured, you know? And they can uh, keep her around for if yeah. they want to use her. Another thing that people think she's going to, what's going to happen to her is she's going to become the Arbiter, which we didn't touch on her yet. I was actually um, going to bring Arbiter. her up next, so go ahead. Oh, that's okay. That's perfect. We can talk about the Arbiter then. Um, so basically in the Shadowlands, there's a entity who's older than memory itself, they said. So older than the Titans, older than the living, probably. I mean, that's what, that's basically what memory means, you know? Mm -hmm. Uh, she's, she's a very ancient entity, and her job is basically to be like, okay, I'm going to evaluate your deeds and you're going to go in this realm in the Shadowlands. And one of the biggest things that should we should know is uh, in Shadowlands, those four realms we were just going to, that's just uh, a small part of the Shadowlands. It's much bigger. It's much grand. There's a lot more places that other beings and entities will go to when they die. But um, she basically goes like, all right, you go here because you did this in life. Um, if you're a good person that was in faith, you know, you go to Bastion. Um, if you died a death where you were fighting nonstop and you wouldn't relent, you're going to go to Maldraxxus. Oh, you were a necromancer. You go to Maldraxxus too. You were a lich. You go to Maldraxxus too. I mean, Kel'Thuzad in Chronicles has stated that he's lost in the Shadowlands. And I feel like um, they're going to send... Kalthazad to the Shadowlands with Maldraxxus. And apparently there's a power struggle there between the Liches or the Covenants there, and I think Kalthazad is definitely a part of that. Dude, that would but, be uh, so awesome if we heard from Kalthazad again. I, I think that I think that the Arbiter, the goal between Sylvanas and the Jailer is to replace the uh, Arbiter with Sylvanas or the Jailer. And I feel like, because right now, there's a misinterpretation between Sylvanas is serving someone? No, she's working with someone. Right. So both the Jailer and Sylvanas are on equal terms with each other, but obviously they could, you know, backstab each other. That's just what villains do. Um, I don't think the Jailer is a good guy. I mean, some people think that the Jailer was the original Arbiter, and the Arbiter is a backstabber herself. So I guess we'll find that out. I'm, I'm really um, curious about that triangle. I know the Arbiter potentially saved uh, Vol'jin. Yeah, some people think that she did that. It could have... The biggest thing that's interesting is, uh, so this is like in a Lost Codex interview, but apparently, uh, the Jailer, one of his, uh, accomplices, uh, talked to Odin, and when Odin traded his eye to view into the Shadowlands to create his Valkyrie and to create his little realm meant for his Rykor Reich warriors, uh, mm -hmm. the, the Jailer's, the Jailer had an accomplice, help him with oh. that. Oh. And that was years upon years upon years ago. So the jailer has people working for him. Uh I think that's really interesting and I think that's really neat. Uh but yeah, we we, we will have probably Vol'jin's mystery come back up again. I really like that they're giving focus on Vol'jin. Me too. Uh, despite being dead because his death was utter bullshit and garbage and I really did not like how they handled Wojin's death. No, me uh, either. And they're giving more focus on him in the afterlife, and he potentially will have a much bigger role, maybe even bigger than Aloha. Maybe he'll be, like, the champion of the Arbiter or something. I don't know. We'll find out. But, uh... I would love it. Shadow... Oh, man, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. But, how dare you. Uh, I... I know we've talked about this before, but I just want to throw it in really quick. I would love it if, like, Vol'jin could somehow earn a second chance at life, but earn another chance at life. So I would actually have to disagree with you on uh, Vol'jin coming back, 
like I said earlier, I don't want death to be demeaned. Mm -hmm. uh, I like what they're doing right now where Vol'jin is a spirit and a ghost, a powerful ghost, who can still interact with the living and still speak to them and still help them in a way. I would prefer that over him returning and basically being like, hey, I'm back, I can be war chief, or I can lead the Dark Spear. I prefer the... I, I do not like how Vol'jin died, but I don't want him his death to be demeaned by him coming back and giving a second chance. Uh, I would prefer it if he just helps out the Horde in, in the dead. I would prefer if he becomes a Loa and uh, the Dark Spear and the Zandalari can worship him. Uh, I think that'd be much better, honestly. The Loa it, thing would be good. I, I really don't agree with you on them bringing him back uh, and demeaning that death. I think that it would... I mean, there's there's some level of, okay, well still a lot of shit happened while he died you know the whole thing with Sylvanas Battle for Ezeroth that all happened because Wojin did die but I think it would be uh would be better if they keep him dead and he you know helps out while being dead uh, I, I don't want Rokan's death to be not Rokan's death Rokan's <laughs> new role as chieftain of the Dark Spear to be you know thrown out the window hey maybe they'll get some interaction soon too that'd be cool yeah maybe <laughs> I mean, we talked about how Talanji and Rastakhan and Buon Samdi, like, there's a whole thing going on with them, uh, potentially, because, you know, Buon Samdi's realm, the other side, is a dungeon. So, we already did a whole podcast on that, so it's not... So, we're at around, like, 45 minutes right now. So, there's, like, two more things I'd like to touch on, since this is kind of a general overview episode. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of the gameplay updates that they're doing, and the customization that's being added. This part will be kind of brief, because there's not too much to really talk about, but, um, it'll be pretty nice. You'll be able to play as, like, forest trolls, sand fury trolls, um, and there's just a lot more customization for your characters, so I'm really excited. Can't wait to see what they do with the Pandaren related to that. Um, I know you're excited for some stuff for the orcs. Of course. So you I mean, there's so much, there's so many things that they can do with the customization. I said, like, uh, like plus 40 options for the blood elves uh, i believe they said that blood elves will be able to have uh darker skin mm -hmm. uh, with humans there's going to be more uh racial stuff going on but um I, i'm definitely more excited for orcs i hope that they give orcs some really good hairstyles uh tattoos tusk options uh they're, they're one of the things that they're adding for everybody is being able to change your eye color uh, like it's no longer bound to a face. You can choose a face and you can choose an eye color finally. So if I want green eyes, I don't have to do the face for ban anymore. Of mm -hmm. course, I'm probably going to keep that face because it's just, you know, me. But <laughs> right. I love the customization options. I really hope they go ham. And, you know, the, the way they showed it at BlizzCon, that was just a small piece of what they're going to offer us, which that excites me. And even it looked more. awesome. I mean, they had broken tusks for trolls. Mm -hmm. like that's such a cool concept like i would love it if they just take you know like examples from the warlords orcs and applies them to the orcs the green orcs i should say i mean there's so many hairstyles and skin tones they didn't do for the maghar that they could do for the og orcs um they could give us the um what's it called the uh the tattoos the shattered the shattered hand hairstyle the long hairstyle that kargath has you can't oh, have that as a maghar that would be awesome uh, there's the Dragon Moss skin. They didn't give that at all to the uh, Maghar orcs. Maybe it's because the Dragon Moss didn't exist yet in Draenor, but in our timeline, it, they do, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, there's so many things that they could do for the customization for orcs and the other races. Uh, for like Dark maybe Rangers for, the... for Undead would be kind of badass. I don't know if they'll go that far, man. You know? Like, I, I mean, they might, do, uh, they might do Dead Elves for Sindori, maybe. They might do um, that. They could do, like... One thing I was curious about for the Draenei, if maybe you could finally have a broken-looking one. That would be awesome. I know they said for the Draenei they're going to have longer tails and more jewelry for both the bleh, for both the genders. So that'll be neat. Honestly, the most interesting thing I'm interested in in Shadowlands is not so much the lore this time, which is <laughs> bizarre for me. It's the customization. It's kind of the same thing with Lords of Draenor. Mm -hmm. I was really excited and pumped for the new models. Not so much the time-traveling story. I mean, I was still kind of intrigued by what they were going to do with that. And it's the same with Shadowlands. 
So, but I'm way more interested in the customization. I love it. Dude, I cannot wait for beta and alpha next year. It's going to be so awesome. But um, I was thinking for the uh, for the Horde Pindarn. Sorry, I got to interrupt you. Oh, you're good. But for the male Pindarn, they can maybe add longer tails like the females have. Yeah. That could be that could be something they could give the males, I think, they, maybe. They could like, have some face paint. That would be awesome, like red face paint or something. Maybe give them finally some, like... You know, like red fur for Horde Pindarn and blue fur for Alliance Pindarn. I don't know. Give them something that can make them look more distinguished and unique. Like, you know, Horde War Paint for Horde for Horde characters and whatnot. But yeah, the customization is definitely one of the most things that I'm interested in. I'm surprised they didn't edit in the features trip. Yeah, me too. Honestly, I um. They're also improving something else, which is the last thing we're going to talk about, but it's um, the leveling. They're going to be steam streamlining the leveling experience, so you do a new area called the Exiles Reach from level 1 to 10. You can still do the old starting zones if you want to, they'll let you pick. Um, and then you kind of pick your era that you want to level in. So ideally, a new player would do Exiles Reach, then do Battle for Azeroth, and then Shadowlands, which is freaking awesome um i'm actually okay with this like if I, I can go play pandaria i can go play cataclysm if i want to whatever um i don't think there's anything bad with this and they said it's gonna be 50 percent faster than the leveling is now i believe or something the only thing i'm concerned about like everything else i'm so positive i'm so happy that i'll be able to be like when I level a character, I can be like, oh, you know, I'm going to level Pandaria this time. You know what? No, I'm going to level Cataclysm. Mm -hmm. I'm probably never going to touch Burning Crusade ever again. <laughs> like, I don't have a reason to go there. It's like one of the worst leveling experiences. Um, War of the Draenor actually has some pretty fun leveling to it. Yeah. But uh, my only my only beef with this, and like this is something my mom got mad about, was the fact that we're losing our level 120 to go all the way back to down to level 50 and get to level 60 again mm -hmm. i do understand the beef of that i definitely understand it um you know we earned our you know levels over the years and now it feels like they're being taken away i definitely feel that i definitely understand why they're doing it too because oh goodness gracious if i have to make an alt and i have to get 129 levels oh gosh that would be hell so screw that I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm in the middle of going like yeah i understand it it's sad that i gotta lose these levels though i think it'd be kind of interesting if like when you leave shadowlands you go back to your level 120 mm -hmm. or something i don't know i don't know how they're gonna handle it i guess it makes sense going forward but hey i get to go to level 80 again at some point then because you know we're gonna go 60 and 70 and then 80 for 10.0 i think should is that right yeah that's pretty accurate we go shadowlands level 60 the next expansion is uh let's see no Holy that'd be 11.0 that'd be 11.0 that we get to level 80 again but that's something that's actually i'm actually looking up yeah you're right actually unless they do a level if they only do five levels again which i doubt it that was not received so positively during cat but uh I, I, i'm i'm pretty excited i do remember them saying that what they're doing is they're making the zones more streamlined i think i don't know the right wording for that basically uh in wards of draenor I, I think they might be taking away the option of choosing what what zone you want to do actually i don't know but i, I think that they what they're doing is they're connecting the zones better narratively so like you completed uh Maldraxxus, mm -hmm. so you go to Ardenwild next, and the story's connected to there. So I actually do think that they're getting rid of the choice option then. Oh, really? I think that's what they're doing, because they want to connect the storylines better. So uh. I don't know what that means, but that'll be interesting. Mm -hmm. I honestly think that was better, because like, basically that's what they did in War of the Draenor. It was pretty nice in WAD, where you had the ongoing campaign throughout your whole leveling. Yeah, it's like you go to Gorgrond after, you know, the Frost Wolves are united mm -hmm. and, you know, freed from the Iron Horde's grip from the Thunderlords and whatnot, and you go to Gorgrond to go recruit the Laughing Skull yeah. to face the Iron Horde some more, and then you go to Talador afterwards, and that kind of, like, concludes with Duratans and Yarel's story of taking down Blackhand after Ogrim Doomhammer and Narad mm -hmm. die, uh, which, you know, those characters were, you know, introduced, 
Uh, well, Ogrim do honestly they did Ogrim do dirty pretty bad in Wad, but that's that's a whole that, other story. Yeah. That's why they can do so much with Shadowlands of like dead characters who we barely got to see, or dead characters who got done dirty again and mm-hmm. redeem them essentially. That's like the biggest appeal for Shadowlands. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of exciting things like gameplay wise and story wise. I mean, they're bringing back old abilities that they took away, like Eyes of the Beast as an example. For hunters. Oh man, I'm excited for the old abilities to come back. Shattering Eyes throw, I think. Like, Eyes of the Beast was like my favorite ability back when in Wrath, so mm-hmm. it was awesome. I'm pretty excited about that. I, <laughs> I I'm I'm pretty pumped for Shadowlands. I'd, I'd say on a hype meter, I'm not as hyped as I was for BFA or Legion or even WAD. Mm-hmm. I'd say I'm probably in the same area that I was excited for Cataclysm, honestly. Which I, was my first expansion. I think I'm pretty close to that too, honestly. I'm I'm very excited and very curious. I I think overall, and I, I'd like to wind down soon. It looks like a very solid expansion, and I think I think it'll be good. I you know, I'm only worried about the story a little bit. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think that's that's you know, that's going to be found because it focuses a lot of Sylvanas. It focuses right. on the dead. The most intriguing part for me is they're focusing on Bolvar, and hopefully they'll ho- focus on Thrall. I know that some people might be tired of Thrall after his long focus being focused on Encada mm-hmm. and Mop and Wad and BFA. BFA, honestly, he wasn't focused on that much. I know a lot of people will be like, no, he was. He was. <laughs> he was given a full CGI cinematic and that one quest line of saving Bane and, you know, had a small part in the Reckoning. I don't know. I feel like focusing on Thrall again would not be that bad, especially if he gets to reunite with Draka. But I'd be okay with that. I'm I'm more intrigued by the characters that aren't Sylvanas, really. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. I'm intrigued by Taronda. I'm intrigued by Thrall. I'm intrigued by Bolvar. Mm-hmm. I'm intrigued by this Jailer character in the Arbiter. I'm really... I'm, I'm always hyped for an expansion, but I'd say... Like, this is probably the... It's kind of weird to say this. It's like the least hyped I've been for expansion in a while, sadly. But uh, I'm still I'm still hyped, you mm-hmm. know? It's like one of those things. Like, I'm still hyped. The hype meter is just lower than usual. But, you know, that can change as more information comes out. Because then I'll be like, oh, they're going to do that. Oh, they're going to do this. Because I remember in Legion, I had very little information on what they're going to do for the BFA artifact weapon. And as more information came out, they basically said, oh, yeah, BM hunters get the brother of Skull. They get hottie. And I was like, all right, Legion, you got me. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm about it, um, those. equally as hype for most expansions as I am for Shadowlands. I think it looks like a lot. Uh, mainly because I'm a bit biased. I like, like, you guys know me. I love Pandaren, but I really like the Lich King lore. So I'm excited uh, for that theme. But... Yeah, we're gonna get the origins of the Lich King then. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lich King's one of my favorite villains of all time, so I'm kind of there with you. Uh, I just hope they focus a lot on and the Lich King. I, I know they're gonna focus on Sylvanas and the Jailer quite a bit in the Ma, but I hope they focus on other characters too. I mean, hey, we're gonna see Varrock Sarfing again maybe in the Ma, so hey, that's one of my favorite characters next to Thrall and Rexar. So that's pretty exciting, at least with that regard, maybe. Yeah, no, I hear ya, but um. So I'd like to wind down, Skull, and um, thank you so much for joining, as usual, Skull. We hope to have some more epic Kunlai Campfire episodes soon related to Shadowlands. I'd like to do some more on BFA, actually, while we still have it. Um, yep. There's a lot to talk about with 8.3. But yeah, I hope you guys like the new format uh, visually, and um, let us know what you thought below in the comments. If there's any cover, If there's any topics you want us to cover, let us know. I'll throw a pizza at the screen, and we'll get it done. Anything else you want to say, Skull? Oh, also, check out Skull Shorties on YouTube. Yeah, how dare you? <laughs> I mean, give me a shout-out after all the stuff I do for you. Um, Dude, sorry, Banarak, live on the Kunlai Campfire. I can give you editing advice. Gosh, goodness gracious. But, uh, uh, you know, as much as, like, I, it's a, a very apprehensive hype, but I'm pretty pumped for Shadowlands regardless. You know, every mm-hmm. expansion I'm, I'm ready to uh, embrace at some point. Uh, I mean... <laughs> BFA has been phenomenal for me, so. Me too, man. Me too. BFA gets too much crap. We could get into that on another podcast. You know we will. (laughs) But anyway, guys, we'll see you next time.